This is the Blackmagic Video Assist 4K interface. In the top left, we've got the format that the Video Assist 4K is receiving. Next, we've got the format that we're recording in, which is ProRes HQ currently. We've got time code, we've got trigger record, we've got the source input, and we've got the recording media. At the bottom left, we've got our histogram, we've got our record and playback control, and then we've got our audio levels. Now, you have no options of changing the resolution or the frame rate. The Video Assist 4K takes this information based on what it receives. If we look at the different codecs that are available, you can see that there are the different flavors of ProRes and also DNxHD, DNxHR. And when you switch between the ProRes and the DNxHD, you'll see that the screen goes black and it does take a few seconds just to catch up and get in that format. So we just tap on the screen to get out of that menu. If we just tap on the trigger select, obviously you can change that if you want to trigger it via timecode or SDR HDMI, you can do that. But also at the bottom, you'll notice that we've also got quick shortcuts to selecting the codec or selecting the source that we're taking the input signal from. It saves you from having to go in and out of the top menu, which is a nice feature. If we click on the histogram in the bottom left corner, you'll see that we have now the different waveforms and scopes available. So we've got waveform, the RGB parade, we've got a vector scope, and of course a histogram. So in terms of displaying, you can see here that we've got it full screen, um, but you've also got a couple of different options as well. You can do picture in picture. Alternatively, we can click on this icon here and we've got two faders for control. The first one will change the opacity of the black background behind the waveform or scope. So we can see our live picture behind there, you can see the camera. And the second fader will change the opacity of the actual scope itself, the white uh, signal there. So you can get it to a point where you can see parts of your image quite clearly behind. And this works across the RGB parade or the vector scope, histogram, any of these monitoring tools. And to get rid of them, we just need to tap back on the video feed and that will give us back our clean live signal. On the top right, you'll see the magnifying glass and that gives us a punch in so we can double check our focus. The square icon at the top left of the screen brings up some other options for monitoring tools. We've got zebra, and we can change the percentage at which those zebras appear on the screen easily with this slider. We've got focus assist with a low, medium, and high control. When you punch in, we can see the focus assist there, which is currently in white. We've got guides, HDTV, for free, and then we've got some cinematic crops as well to help you judge your composition. Let's just turn them off. And we've got the grid as well, which isn't changeable. This is the standard grid that comes up. And at the end, we've got false color to help you judge your exposure. If we click on our storage at the top right, it brings us to this menu where we can quickly format our cards. Now there are two card slots on here. I've just got the one SD card at the moment. So we click format, it's fairly intuitive. And I'm just gonna speed this section up. I had a 16 gig card in there and it took around 30 seconds to format. It's definitely not the quickest, but it's definitely not the slowest either. Once that's done, we can go back and now the Video Assist 4K will let me trigger recording. So we can just trigger that. We can see the time code going at the top. It's flashing saying low card, but that's just because I've only got a 16 gig card in the device at the moment. And whilst we're recording, we can still bring up all our waveforms, our vector scopes, and we have the same amount of control that I showed you before. And in terms of playback, once this recording is stopped, again, you've still got the same amount of control when it comes to your waveforms and scopes. So we've stopped the recording. We can instantly review that by pressing play. And all the monitoring tools that we had before, such as the zoom in function to check our focus, the waveforms, the scopes, all of it is exactly the same in terms of functionality as it is when you're recording or when you're just previewing your live footage. So let's go back to the, the main menu and you can see at the top we've got storage, monitor, display, audio and setup tabs. So on the monitor we can change it from peaking to lines on the focus assist. We've got an anamorphic de-squeeze, uh, so if you're shooting with a camera such as uh, GH4, GH5 and shooting anamorphic. This will actually de-squeeze the image for you so you can see what it's going to look like uh, when you get into the edit. We've got 3D LUTs in the Video Assist 4K. Uh, currently it's off so if I just turn that on 
and you can cycle through the built-in LUTs. So at the moment I've got S-Log to Rec 709. But a nice feature is you can also load in your own custom LUTs as well. So if you've got a particular look that you want to put on your edit, you can get this loaded into the Video Assist 4K. And when you're out shooting on location, you can load that in and get a nice preview as to what your final images could look like whilst you're still recording them. We've got our focus line color. So you're peaking, we can change the color and just cycle through for whatever works for you. And we've got blue only as well. On the display options, we've got brightness, contrast, and saturation of the screen. As you would expect to have those controls. So this recorder can record up to two channels of audio. And under this audio tab, we can see those two channels and where they're taking the signal from. So at the moment, I've got channel one taking the XLR mic input. And I've got channel two taking the audio signal from the camera that we've got hooked up to the video assist. Typical padding and we've got phantom power on there as well for both channels. On the last tab on setup, we've got the device name, we've got the date, language, and more importantly, what software version we're running at. And that's the Video Assist 4K.